हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इफ यू आर न्यू टू माय चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन विद रीसेंट अपडेट्स ऑन लारावेल स्टार्टर किट्स नाउ कम विद बिल्ट इन टू फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन पावर्ड बाय लारावेल फोर्टिफाई एडिंग एन एक्स्ट्रा लेयर ऑफ सिक्योरिटी टू यूजर अकाउंट्स यूजर्स कैन प्रोटेक्ट देर अकाउंट्स यूजिंग एनी टाइम बेस्ड वन टाइम पासवर्ड कंपेटेबल ऑथेंटिकेटर एप्स सच एज गूगल ऑथेंटिकेटर और माइक्रोसॉफ्ट ऑथेंटिकेटर इन दिस वीडियो You learn how to implement two-factor authentication in your LiveWire starter kit. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, ensure that the latest version of the Laravel installer is installed on your system. Open your terminal and type the command Laravel new your project name and press enter. Next, for starter kit, type LiveWire and press enter. Now, for authentication provider, type Laravel and press enter. Next, type no and press enter since we won't be using Volt. Next, for the testing framework, type zero for pest and press enter. The installation may take some time, depending on your internet connection. So please wait until it's complete. Now, type yes and press enter to run npm install and npm run build. which will install dependencies and compile front end assets the installation is complete now type cd your project name to navigate into your project directory next open your project in visual studio code if you open the composer.json file you will see laravel/45version 1.30 this tells us that laravel 45 is installed now Let's take a look at the files added by Fortify along with some other related files. Open Fortify service provider.php file which is inside the app providers folder. Here you can see a boot method that calls three functions. One for configuring actions, one for configuring views and another for rate limiting. The configure actions method defines which classes handle user registration and password reset. The configure views method tells Fortify which blade or live wire views to use for pages like login, registration, password reset. and to factor authentication finally the configure rate limiting method limits how many login or to factor attempts a user can make per minute to protect against brute force attacks now open fortify.php file inside the config folder in this file settings like the authentication guard password broker and user identification field are configured this section also shows which features are enabled for fortify such as registration password reset email verification and to factor authentication open app actions fortify folder and inside you will find the create new user .php file this file defines the create new user class which implements the creates new users contract provided by fortify handling user creation and validation next open the password validation rules .php file this file contains a trait that provides the password rules method which returns the validation rules for passwords such as being a string using the default password rule and being confirmed now open reset user password .php file this file defines the reset user password class which implements the resets user passwords contract provided by fortify the class includes a reset method that validates and resets the user's forgotten password by using the password rules method and then updating the password in the database next open the recovery codes .php file inside the livewire settings two factor folder this file defines the recovery codes component which handles generating and loading to factor authentication recovery codes it includes methods like regenerate recovery codes to generate new recovery codes for the user and load recovery codes to load and decrypt the user's existing recovery codes now open two factor .php file inside the livewire settings folder this file defines the two factor component which manages the enabling disabling and confirmation of two factor authentication It includes methods like enable to enable to factor authentication for the user, confirm to factor to confirm authentication, and disable to turn off to factor authentication. The component also handles loading setup data like the QR code and setup key for the user's authenticator app. Next, open the user.php file inside the app models folder. It uses traits like has factory, notifiable, and to factor authenticatable for factory support, notifications, and to factor authentication respectively the model also defines the fillable attributes for mass assignment hidden attributes for serialization 
and custom methods like initials to return the user's initials. Next, open userfactory.php file inside the database factories folder. This file defines the user factory class, which is used to generate fake data for user creation, including fields like name, email, password, and two-factor authentication details. The two-factor authentication fields, such as two-factor secret, two-factor recovery codes, and two-factor confirmed and are randomly generated for each user. Additionally, the without two-factor method allows the factory to create a user without two-factor authentication by setting those fields to null. Next, open the migration file inside the database. Migrations folder. This migration adds three new columns to the user's table. Two-factor secret, two-factor recovery codes, and two-factor confirmed at. The two-factor secret and two-factor recovery codes columns are used to store the user's two-factor authentication details, while the two-factor confirmed at timestamp is used to track when two-factor authentication was confirmed for the user. Next, open recovery code input.blade.php file inside the resources, views, components folder. This file defines a custom Blade component for handling two-factor authentication code input. The component allows users to input a six-digit code, where each digit is entered into a separate input field. It handles user interactions, such as focusing on the next input field, handling backspace, pasting values, and updating a hidden field with the complete code. The component also supports handling the paste event, where users can paste a full 2FA code, and it automatically fills in the individual input fields. Now. Open the tofactorchallenge.blade.php file inside the resources, views, live via, auth folder. This file provides the 2FA challenge form, allowing users to log in using either an authentication code from their authenticator app or a recovery code. It uses Alpine.js for toggling between the two input methods and displays validation errors accordingly. Next, open the recoverycodes.blade.php file inside the resources, views, live via, settings, to factor folder. This file displays the user's 2FA recovery codes, allowing them to view, hide, or regenerate the codes. It includes a button to toggle visibility and provides instructions on how recovery codes can be used to regain access to the account. Next, open to factor.blade.php file inside resources, views, live via, settings folder. This file manages the two factor authentication settings for the user. It allows the user to enable or disable 2FA and it displays a modal for setting up 2FA using a QR code. The modal also includes a verification step to confirm the 2FA setup. Additionally, users can manually enter a setup key or copy it to the clipboard for easier setup on their authentication app. Now, open web.php file located in the routes directory. This file defines the routes for the application, including the route for accessing the two-factor authentication settings. Specifically, the route for settings Two-factor is protected by middleware that requires users to confirm their password before proceeding, but only if two-factor authentication is enabled and the password confirmation feature is active. This ensures that sensitive settings related to security are properly protected. Next, open the routes.php file located inside the vendor, Laravel, Fortify Routes directory. This file defines the default authentication routes provided by Laravel Fortify, including routes for login, registration, password reset, email verification, and two-factor authentication. Specifically, for two-factor authentication, the routes are protected by middleware that ensures only authenticated users with valid session tokens can access these settings. Additionally, some routes are further secured by requiring users to confirm their password before making changes, ensuring an extra layer of security for sensitive operations, such as enabling or disabling two-factor authentication. This is only triggered if two-factor authentication and password confirmation features are enabled in the application. Now that we have explored the files related to Fortify and to factor authentication, it's time to set up the database for our application. Open.env file. By default, the app is set up to use SQLite as the database. First, uncomment the following lines of code in the .env file to enable MySQL configuration. Next, replace SQLite with MySQL as we will be using MySQL for this app. Here, add the database name for our app. Copy this database name. Go to phpMyAdmin. Click on New, paste the database name, and click Create to create the database. The database has been created. Next, we need to migrate the database. Go back to Visual Studio Code and open your terminal. Type the command php artisan migrate and press Enter to migrate the database. As you can see, 
The migration for add to factor columns to users table was executed along with other default migrations. Go back to PHP My Admin and click on the database you created. You will see all the tables that were created. Next, click on the users table. Here, you will see all the columns for the users, including the new ones added for two factor authentication, such as to factor secret, to factor recovery codes, and to factor confirmed at. These columns are essential for storing the two factor related data for each user. Now, Let's run our app. Go back to Visual Studio Code. Type CLS to clear the terminal. Type the command Composer Run Dave to run our app. You can see that both the Laravel and White servers have started. Go to your browser and navigate to localhost colon 8000 and you should see the Laravel welcome page along with login and register links. Click on the register link to navigate to the registration page. Enter your name email, password, and confirm your password. Then, click on Create Account to register a new user. You will be redirected to the dashboard. Click on the drop-down menu and select Settings to navigate to the Settings page. Now click on Two-Factor Auth link and you'll be taken to a password confirmation page. We will need to enter the password to access the two-factor authentication settings. Enter your password and click Confirm and you will be redirected to the two-factor authentication settings. As you can see, Two-factor authentication is disabled by default. Go back to PHP My Admin, reload the page, and you should see the newly registered user added to the users table. You will also notice that the columns for two-factor secret, two-factor recovery codes, and two-factor confirmed at are currently null, as two-factor authentication is still disabled at this point. To enable two-factor authentication, simply click on the Enable 2FA button. A modal will appear displaying a QR code along with a Continue button. Below the QR code, you will also find a manual code that you can enter directly into your Authenticator app. For this tutorial, I am using the Google Authenticator app. I have already downloaded the app from the Play Store. Unfortunately, I am unable to do a screen recording as the app does not allow it for security reasons. Once the Google Authenticator app is downloaded, open it and click on Get Started. You will then see your Google account listed with a button saying Continue as your name. Beneath this button, there's an option to use Without an Account which I will be using for this setup. So, click on Use without an account. At the bottom, you will see a plus icon. Click on it and you will be presented with two options. Scan a QR code and enter a setup key. Select Scan a QR code and the scanner will open. As soon as we scan the QR code, a six-digit code will appear along with the user's email. This code will expire in a few seconds and a new six-digit code will be generated. Now, click Continue to proceed. Now, you will see a modal to verify the authentication code. Enter the six-digit code from the Authenticator app and click Confirm. You can see that two-factor authentication is now enabled. You will see the two FA recovery codes with a View Recovery Codes button and another to disable two-factor authentication. Click on the View Recovery Codes button to see your recovery codes. You'll also find an option to regenerate them if needed. Click on Hide Recovery Codes to hide. Click on the View Recovery Codes button again and the recovery codes will be displayed. Select all the recovery codes and copy them. Open Notepad and paste them there as we will need them when logging in. Click on the drop down and select Log Out to sign out from the app. Next, click the login link to go to the login page. Before we log in, go to PHP My Admin. As you can see, the columns for two factor secret, two factor recovery codes, and two factor confirmed at are currently null. Now, reload the page. And you'll notice that all these columns are populated with values as we have enabled to factor authentication. Go back to the login page, enter email and password, then click on login. You will be redirected to the to factor authentication page. Here, you can enter the six digit code and click continue or select login using a recovery code to enter a recovery code and then click continue. Click on login using an authentication code. Enter the six digit code from your authenticator app and click continue. You will now be redirected to the dashboard. Click on this drop down and then click on settings to go to the settings page. Click on two factor auth and you will be taken to the confirm password page. Enter your password, click confirm, and you will be redirected to the two factor authentication page. Click on view recovery codes, open notepad, and you will find all your recovery codes there. Now, let's log in with a recovery code. Click on the drop down and select log out to sign out from the app. Next, click the login link to go to the login page, enter your email and password, and then click the login button. 
you will see the two-factor challenge page. Click on login using a recovery code. Open notepad, copy the first recovery code and paste it here. Then click continue. You will now be redirected to the dashboard page. Click on this drop down and then click on settings to go to the settings page. Click on two-factor auth and you will be taken to the confirm password page. Enter your password, click confirm and you will be redirected to the two-factor authentication page. Click on view recovery codes, then open the notepad file containing the recovery codes. As you can see, the first recovery code in the notepad has been replaced with a new one in the recovery codes within our app as it was used for logging in. Now, let's try to log in using the same expired recovery code and see what happens. Copy this recovery code. Click on the drop down and select logout to sign out from the app. Now click the login link to go to the login page, enter your email and password and then click the login button. You will see the two-factor challenge page. Click on login using a recovery code. Open notepad, copy the first recovery code we used earlier, paste it here and click on continue. You will see an error. The provided two-factor recovery code was invalid. Now, copy the second recovery code, paste it here and click on continue. Now you will be redirected to the dashboard. Click here. Then select settings to go to the settings page. Click on two-factor auth and you will be taken to the confirm password page. Enter your password, click confirm and you will be redirected to the two-factor authentication page. Now, click on view recovery codes. Open the notepad file with the recovery codes and you'll notice that the first and second recovery codes have been replaced by two new recovery codes in the app's recovery codes list. Now, let's disable two-factor authentication. Click on the disable 2FA button and to factor authentication will be disabled for your account. Now, go to PHP My Admin and reload the page. You will notice that the columns for two factor secret, two factor recovery codes, and two factor confirmed at are now set to null as two factor authentication has been disabled. If you prefer not to show the confirm password page, open fortify.php file and comment out the line that sets confirm password to true. In this tutorial, we have successfully set up two factor authentication for our LiveWire Starter Kit application using Laravel Fortify. We started by configuring the necessary environment settings and migrating the required database tables. We then walked through the process of enabling 2FA, setting up Google Authenticator, and testing the recovery codes. Additionally, we explored how to disable 2FA and the effect of this action on our database. By the end of this tutorial, you should have a solid understanding of how to implement, test, and manage to factor authentication in a LiveWire Starter Kit app. With 2FA enabled, your application security is significantly enhanced, ensuring that only authenticated users can access sensitive data and settings. If you're interested in the LiveWire Starter Kit CRUD tutorial, click on the video to the left. Or, if you want to watch the Filament 4 Admin Panel Complete CRUD Application Tutorial, click on the video to the right. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Feel free to drop any questions or comments below, and I'll be happy to help. I will see you in next tutorial. Till then stay safe.